Hello there and welcome to this next video where we want to introduce the reference designation system. In this short video we're going to take a look at structuring and classification and that, how that helps us deal with complicated systems. So without further ado, please join me. We have a mantra here and that is it's all about system thinking. And what does that mean? That means that we see the world as systems. Systems, which consist of system elements, which can be broken down into system elements, and so on and so forth. How does that help us? Well, let's try to take a practical example. Here we have an old beauty, an old Ford Model T. If I were to ask you, please tell me how this car works, what are its components and its main function, it would be hard to know where to start. But now we take a more system-based approach to the same task. Like this. Now it's a bit easier. Now we clearly see that we have a wheeling system, we have a lighting system, we have an engine system, a steering system, and also a cabin system, which consists of actually two systems, over cabin and under cabin. Now we have identified the five main systems of our car. We can try to break that down even further. So let's start with the engine system. The engine system can be broken down into its system elements, so a lubrication system, drive shaft system, ignition system, and so on. We can also break that down, so the ignition system consists of a spark plug system, ignition coil system, wire system, and so on. Please notice here that because we have created now a tree-like structure of our system, we have created an unambiguous way to identify our component. There's only one way to get to the wire system. But people might still disagree on what to call stuff. Because is it, is it a wire system? Or is it an electrical transfer system? However, what people do agree on is the function of the system. So the definition of it. For example here, an object for transfer of electrical energy through a wire. So, we now need a classification system to control the names. The big question now is how do we handle these definitions? Well, 81346 luckily already has provided an answer. The standard has defined three main types of systems. We have the main systems, technical systems, and component systems. And they have structured these definitions quite cleverly in a class library. So, here we will find an overall class, for example here W, which is object for leading from one place to another. Within this class we find WD, which is a guiding object for low voltage uh, electrical energy. And within this class we'll find WDB, low voltage electrical energy guiding object by wire. All of these classes we find in what we call the component system library. But we also have what we call technical systems, and these are the two-letter classification codes. And here, for example, we find JK, which is an electrical transportation system. We also have what we call main systems, and here we find the one-letter codes, which could, for example, be class K here, electrical uh, system. Please notice here that I have picked classes which all represent something with electrical energy, but the letter codes in themselves has nothing to do with each other. They only refer to the class. The free system libraries in 81346 are separate libraries, so they have nothing to do with each other. They contain their own systems, and we view them a little bit like Lego bricks. So we can take the component systems, aggregate those to create technical systems, and aggregate those again to create main systems. Each level here represents their own kind of level of complexity. We find these system libraries in parts of the 81346 standard. The current landscape for the RDS 81346 standard looks like this. We have part 2, which contains the component system classifications, which I mentioned earlier. The main systems and the technical systems, the one and two letter codes, uh, are defined in each uh, of their own parts. So, for example, from the power systems point of view, we find the classifications for main systems and technical systems in part 10. 
From construction uh, work point of view, we find the classification in part 12. There are also plans to make the same kinds of classification for aerospace industry, for oil and gas, and for the infrastructure industry. Now that we know that the world consists of systems and each system can be classified, let's try to see how that looks in our structure. So here, now every system has gotten their own letter code and a number, which makes them unambiguous. And if we now take a look at the same road in our tree structure here, we found that the road to our wire system, our W, db1 here is unique, so it creates an unambiguous full reference designation for our component system. Now we missed only one final crucial part for our reference designation system, and that's the fact that a system can actually have multiple points of view depending on the engineer who are looking at it. So depending on if we look at a construction point of view or functional point of view, people might have different kinds of breakdowns. How do we handle that? We handle that by something called aspects. And I want to present that to you in the next video.